happy hump day, folks. Obviously, we're heading to Pilates and Acrobatics. Oh, Wednesday here in Detroit, Friday for y'all. Hope you've had a good week. Hope you've been doing well. And I hope you got plans to go see some theater this weekend. Temperature right now in Detroit is perfect. I can't believe it's October. I'm in a tank top. So, you know, that's, that's a thing. But I am not complaining because the winter is right around the corner. And even though I'm from Colorado, I will go ahead and say it. Detroit winter is a little rougher and Chicago winter is definitely rougher than Colorado winter. Colorado is just the best. If you have not been to Colorado, you should probably get yourself out there. But 300 days of sun a year. That right there, that little fact is why Colorado is the best. Because even if it snows, you can have blue skies and it's absolutely gorgeous. Pilates room. No one's here yet. I'm here a little early. Got some extra work to do on the computer. Here we go. Good day of acrobatics, Pilates, yes. do some animal etudes. Animal etudes. And now we're gonna slide in here, and I know you've heard his name, you've seen his face, Ernest Bentley. Yo! Ernest, where are you from? from Detroit, Michigan, y'all. Whoa, oh, wait a minute. Be, bro. Where'd, you, where'd you go, where'd you go? Where'd I went to Cass, Dick. Ah, you went to Cass. What's Cass? For those of- the best high school in the country. Mm -hmm. Right there, that's and awesome. And all the people who don't go there, sad. <laughs> where, where'd you do your undergrad? The University of Minnesota. And then you stayed up there. Where'd you work? The Guthrie. That's right. He worked That's where the you want to work. Guthrie. Because he's a talented That's man. That's where you want to work. That's right. Talented mofo. Then he came home here to Detroit. Back to Detroit. After I was living in New York for a couple years. That's right. Living came the life. back here and then started grad school. Yep. Did you plan, uh, what you got planned after uh, after getting out of here? Wait, I have you... no idea yet. Exactly. The world's your oyster. The world's oyster, man. <laughs> we'll see when I'm out of here, man. All right. Eight um, more months. Ernest Bentley. Check him out. Pay attention. Right, this guy's going to the top. I promise you that. He's a talented man. Talented. <laughs> Bye. I love you, buddy. All right, we got to get filmed, and then we got a matinee, so we're going right to right to the theater after this. We got a fast day today. Here we go. Yeah. Woo! There we go. Classes for the day are complete. We have a matinee, like I had mentioned before, for the underpants. So I'm just running home real quick to grab a shower, grab some food, and then get myself back to the theater. So let's grab that quick shower. Always feel great after a shower, especially after working hard in Jill's class. We gotta get to the theater, we got a show, we got talk back, we got photo call, then we got streetcar rehearsal. Let's get to that theater. Hillberry, here we come! Gonna get in my costume right now and then head on stage to do my part of the show. But afterwards, after we do the talk back and photo call, I'm gonna go ahead and relay to you all some of the questions that were asked. And then I'm gonna talk to you this evening a little bit about talkbacks if you ever go see a show and uh, attend a show that has a talkback and I'll just let you know at least from the actor's perspective what constitutes a good talkback question so got to get it get into my costume oh is the big man going to join me you want to come up and talk about talkbacks wow the big man's coming to hang out all right 
Socrates wants to wants to give his little input on talkbacks. If you've never been or even heard of talkbacks, I hope you have, but theaters sometimes offer what is known as a talkback after a show to give the audience a chance to ask questions to the actors, the stage manager, sometimes the designers if they are there, and just to inquire about the show, some of the decisions that were made, and things like that. So this talk back we had today was hosted by the fabulous Mecca, who is one of our new theater manager graduate students first year, and she did a bang up job, first of all, so hit the like for Mecca if you like Mecca, and I like her a lot, so I'm gonna hit the like on this, which is weird to like my own video, but you know, I said I'm gonna do it, so I'm gonna do it. She started off the talk back by asking us a quick, quick introduction of the actors, say like who we are, what year we are, where we're from, and then also to, she just broke the ice. Sometimes the audience is a little timid or a little hesitant to ask some questions. So she asked us about the process of being in the first show of the year, what was that like, and asked about how we get along as company members or as fellow actors on the stage, how we relate to one another, and stuff like that. So then the audience had a chance to ask some questions, and they, they did a good job today in terms of asking questions. They asked about some some clarifying moments in one of the scenic transitions, like what was going on here, there was no music, all the men were doing something and the women weren't, and that was a, that was a good question, a little bit more into like the structure of the play, what was the director trying to get at, what was the point of doing that. Another question had to do with the time period of the play and what it was like to try to connect to these characters that we are all playing because the play is set in 1910 Germany and we live in 2017 and there are some distinct differences within the structure of society and how things work. So that was a good question to kind of check in with the actors about and see like how did you kind of identify with the character, what made you do what you do, how do you differentiate yourself from the character you're playing and things like that. But what I want to do real quick is to the audience members, this is not tips for actors or anything like that, but if you're somebody who goes to the theater and you attend a talk back ever, I'm just gonna give you a couple examples of questions you don't need to ask us because I'll just give you the answers right now. Sometimes you will get the question, how do you learn all the lines? Here's the answer, you, you do it. You put in the time and you work hard and you learn, in the line, learn all the lines. Uh-oh, the camera's gonna start shaking. Alistair, psst. Alistair, psst. Alistair just attacked the camera, so if the position changed, that's what. Sometimes we will get questions that have more to do with the playwright than with us as the actors. I've heard questions about, like, why was, you know, if, if you have a play that has, like, a time jump or something like Act 1 takes place in the 50s, Act 2 takes place now, sometimes you'll get a, a question or a comment that's like, why... Why did you do that? Just ask yourself, is this a question for the actors or is this a question for a playwright? Because a lot of the structural questions about a show have nothing to do with the acting company and the actors that you see before you on the stage. I would encourage you as an audience member, if you want to engage the actors in a discussion about the, the piece, the that you just saw us perform to ask us questions about content. Ask questions about ask questions about characters' decisions. Why do you think this is relevant today? Why do you think the audience reacted with laughter or with any sort of emotion in particular moments in the show. And the more specific your question is, the better chance we have of answering it. Just like the more specific our acting choices are on stage, the better chance you, the audience, have of feeling an emotional response to the decisions and choices that we made and performed on stage. But all that being said, please, if you go to the theater and they offer a talk bag, stick around for the extra 10 to 15 minutes. You might learn something about the actor who is playing a character on stage that would enlighten you. It might just be like, oh wow, that's what that person normally sounds like. Or maybe, oh wow, you're not from the area. Or, oh, you've been in school or you haven't been in school. It's just a fun way to connect with the people that you just saw perform on the stage. But, yes. 
To anyone who attended the talk back, thank you very much. And hopefully you will come see Streetcar and then stick around because I know we're going to be having talkbacks after some Streetcar performances. So definitely check that out. I'm going to eat now. And then I actually forgot, but luckily we got a reminder post on our Facebook group that we have a Hillberry Company meeting at 6.05. And then I will just be working lines in the space. Uh, hopefully that meeting will go to like 6.45 and then I'll get a chance to hit the script, keep working on Streetcar, and then we're gonna do a stumble through work through of the whole show tonight. I don't know how far we will get and we will just continue to work until 10.30 when we will be dismissed. Bye. Meeting we're heading into HCA, Hillbury Company Association. So when I got here, there wasn't an HCA and we started one. So as students, you should advocate for yourselves. And if the, you feel like you don't have a voice, go for it. Hey, look at that. We got everybody here. Look at all the beautiful people. <laughs> Again, at least you'll be in the video this time. Huh? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I tag her just like, oh, you really weren't in that one. I feel bad. Oh no! Uh oh, uh oh. No, what is oh, that? Hey, <laughs> Sarah. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> Good meeting. Now we gotta hurry up and set up for, for rehearsal. We're gonna help stage management because they do so much for us. Because we love stage management, Brian Haven. I love stage management.